All right, so you're looking at the Rust T. Uh, I've been working on this car for a while. I owned this car about 15 years ago and then I sold it and it's changed hands a couple times. And uh, we have made a considerable amount of changes since then as well uh, for the new owner. But it's got some pretty cool stuff on it right now. The uh, Robert originally, when uh, he got it, had a Cadillac 500 engine in it. That was the engine that I put in it, but he blew it up. He actually broke the crank in half. So uh, he wanted to know if we could put a 12 valve in it or a diesel in it. So we found a 12 valve, it's the 93 to a valve, 12 valve with a two wheel drive training. It already had the dually in it. So to do that, we had to reinforce the frame and then change the whole front axle assembly. It originally had a, a 39 style front axle, but we stuck this 3500 Dodge uh, two wheel drive front axle in there. Um, those are all the lights and everything still to go on them. There's a lot, there's still a lot to do on it, but uh, you can see the intercooler there. We got rid of the, the bigger intercooler that would have gone out front and then uh, used two Dodge Neon ones. That one's goes underneath the, right from the turbo intercooler underneath the engine and then back up to this one. Radiator from a Bobcat. Uh, the exhaust will eventually actually cut the door up so we could not put that underneath the car and still open the door fine. And that'll go over top of the rear wheels one day. Um, yeah, I got the T-bar in there, roof rack, had all sorts of all sorts of stuff to it. Uh, you see the taillights back there now. And uh, this originally, this car originally had the radiator in the back of it and it had uh, uh, scoops on the roof and it uh, the air came down the sides and attempted to cool the rad, but it never really worked very well. So we tossed that. Um, Let's see. Oh yeah, check out the lights. So Robert, the owner, is a huge sci-fi guy. And uh, we're trying to make this thing look like it's kind of a sci-fi-like vehicle, right? So let me hit the main battery switch here. You can see the, the luminescent wire throughout the whole car, through the roof, everything. So if I'd hit the battery switch again. So that'll come on when the headlights come on. And then, uh, yeah, if we go over here, check these things out. Should be the so the signal switches up there, but so these are LED flame lights that I have inside these metal cages, and these will act as the the signals on the side of it. Of course, the rear ones will still be there, and there'll be ones on the front as well. But I thought that was a pretty cool effect. But now we got a bunch of stuff to do to the interior, so I thought I'd uh, include you in the next segment. So the seats I'm thinking about making for this car now um, have to look more spaceshipy, if you will, right? Something from a, I don't know, some some ancient rustic spaceship that sort of goes along with the vibe of this thing, whatever that may be, right? You can tell it's going to be probably some some steel as opposed to aluminum, maybe some rivets, lots of angles, no curves, uh, probably no bead rolling, but probably thin. I want this thin foam fabric. I don't know how to describe it other than like a um, high density foam, high density foam. But anyway, so I bent this one up just to look at it. And you can sort of imagine if I put that in the right scale, kind of what that would look like. Kind of like a racing seat, but um, you know, very simple, but high back as well. Because I have an idea because we're running, there's an iPad that sits there that connects to that Echo Dot up there. And I want a set of up right there, a pair of wireless speakers that'll act as the uh, sound system for the car. So high backrest, headrest, and then, um, yeah, let's start making some. There we go. Let's put that in kind of scale there. Something like that, whatever it is. Let's get to it. All right, so this is the seat that I already ran up the flagpole and got an approval on. Just to something to start so we can see and look at it, you know? But um, I like the angles on it. I think that's pretty cool. But, you know, when, you're, when your back's up against the seat and your head's here, your shoulders, I'm worried that this is going to hit the hit your shoulders there. So let's modify this one a little bit. Let me grab the...
looks a little more sci-fi. High back. Tell you though, the padding on it, you can do some unique stuff with the padding as well. So let's, what if we did something like strips of pads? I want to, like I said, that high density foam. And then you can just use this to go right up the back of it. I don't know how this, put one big pad on the head maybe. I don't know. And then the speakers are going to be there. I don't know how those are going to look yet. Same thing down here. You got two pads for your butt cheeks. Whatever. One for the front of your legs. And just let the air vent and get around in there. It's fine. And then as far as interior lights go, I was thinking of putting a couple of kind of lights right in the front just to project, you know, on your tow board when you get into the car kind of deal. Something like that. But these things, I know they sell these pads, those uh, kneeling pads. You know what, maybe that's a better idea. Not the high density foam, but those kneeling pads because they're, they're pretty high density and they're thin, right? Like an inch thick, whatever, an inch maybe, inch, an inch and a bit, whatever. Use those and cut them into different segments and pads. So that looks, that looks more spaceshipy high tech already. So next stage, I'm gonna cut this whole thing out on the on the CNC plasma. Oh yeah, I gotta put, to put pads up in there too. And then I'll see probably a, a hole for a, a seat belt. I have to get the lap belt through there somehow, right? Whatever, that'll be some sort of hole in there. And then um, probably just weld this one together. I won't bother riveting it together. And then uh, I have some old seat tracks from uh, Honda. I, I like those ones because they're only like an inch and a quarter inch tall as well. And I can just put the seat tracks, uh, and bolt them in here and weld some tabs on here and link the two together. So at least the seats will track back and forth. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to cut this out on the plasma. So let's go take some dimensions and uh, start drawing this up on SolidWorks. this could be a Milwaukee marker commercial but these things were way better than those other sharpies let's see a sharpie color on metal for this long without the tip getting all fouled up I'm probably getting carried away here huh? yeah I have a tendency to do that It's time to make some seats. So I have a file folder on the computer here of seats that I've been stashing away and just looking at them. But there's a one here that I think can work for what I'm thinking. For these ones? Yeah, this one's not bad. You see it's got that high density foam thing in there? It's kind of shapely though, too curvy for me. But these aren't bad. I like these ribs on the back too. We may have to use those. Um, yeah, those are pretty cool. So let's, um, see if we can get on some solid works here and start playing with it. Yeah, that's pretty cool.
right, so now you can see the basic shape. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. Super simple, still like an aircraft seat, but kind of um, spaceshipy. You can see where these the speakers are going to go up there. I don't know if they're going to be round or not. I have no idea. That's just an indicator of where they're going to go. So um, let's add some padding and some straps across the back there and take a look at it. So I think this is something I can start with anyway. I have to break it into its uh, separate parts, of course, to be able to create DXF files from it. But the main body I should be able to flatten out and print out as one piece. I'll probably make it a, a smaller version first so I don't commit to a full thing or, you know, all that material first. But you get the idea of the padding on there. I don't mind that. I tried to put some contrast of the, the sheet metal in the back, the gray part, but um, and I guess we can always either thicken up the pads or make them fatter. Oh yeah, I forgot to make the seat belt holes. All right, well, I can cut those in afterwards anyway. That's no big deal. And then, um, yeah, these ribs, um, I can make these as individual parts, but this rib up the back where it joins here, I figured that'll be one bar and that will give, because there's no side support on this part of the seat, so it'll be really flexible. So by putting these bars all the way up there that should uh, take care of that awesome next step start cutting her out all right so now i imported the seat into design edge which is the interface between the plasma table and my computer so i need to scale that's the full size there that's the full size green one and seat there so let me rotate that Got a little piece of scrap on the table. And I'll just cut a small one just to see what it's like. I'll scale that down. Now I'll move it. Yeah, that works all right. Let's just stick it in there. Can you give me something to look at? Now let's zoom in on that. Move the table over here. All right, so let's uh, set a path. Right there, convert the holes. Yep. And. So that's the that's the miniature seat that you saw me plasma cut out there a minute ago, and um, just as a trial. But uh, I had to make some revisions to it. Once I was looking at the drawing when I was doing it on the computer, I put these notches in here. So from the side bolster, you can see where the line folds, and then it went, would have went straight up to the fold in the in the headset there. I just notched it a bit, and then uh, that offered. An excellent spot for those ribs, the strengthening ribs to mount there, and uh, just put the holes in it. So we're going to put some accessories on the back of this, so I need somewhere to mount it, and to put all the uh, USB cable ties and stuff like that for the speakers. So, um, yeah, speaking of speakers, we got these these hive setups. I was trying to find some speakers that I could gang together, and these hive ones seem to be it. But of course, they're octagons, not circles. So I'll have to. Have to modify that. I wasn't 
I'm not sure if I'm going to stick it through there or mount them on the surface yet. Um, yeah, whatever, TBD. These do work quite well, though. So once you uh, hit the on button, they do gang together. Um, I don't know if you have to power each one on or once the USB cable is connected to it and I turn power to the USB cable, will they all turn on? So um, that's the plan. So you turn on the ignition um, or turn on the, uh, the stereo or whatever, turn on a switch and all the speakers will come on or you got to hit those buttons and gang them all together individually. Still have to figure that one out. Either way. And also, I picked up some of this. This is the that high-density foam of stuff. This just turns out to be an earth pad, kneeling pad. But this is actually pretty nice. I don't know what you like to sit on, but I can kneel on it all right. You know, obviously you can clean your tires and do some gardening and sit on a dock and uh, whatever she's doing. Scrubbing the floor. So, uh, I don't know how, how many am I going to need for these. Probably three or four of these pads per seat in its full size, but, and I think if, you know, on the bottom, if it's really hard, maybe we can just double it up or something. Either way. So now we can uh, start making some bigger versions of it. Let's see if I can do this as well. Like I did with a small one. Mint. A little bit bigger though. What we do here is go back, 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 back. body tack together. Considerably larger than I thought it was going to be. Well, not really. I guess it's to scale. It should fit. There's the smaller one. It's pretty funny. I got all the ribs ground down. So I'll get to keep tacking this thing together, put the ribs on it, and then uh, put it in the car and see how she looks. Looks big, eh? But that's 30 inches, so. Yeah, I didn't cut the holes out for the Hive speakers yet. I figured I'd mount them on the surface there. Um, yeah, I don't know, let's keep going. A bit of a twist in it, but the seat tracks will sort that out. So now I'm gonna measure up the seat tracks. Check the spacing in the car to see where they're going to go. Tap them here to there. Let's get to it.
now I've got the seat tracks on it. See, I, I angle cut this too right at the end. I think that looks a little better, finishes it off. And there's less of a chance of it hitting the tunnel on the one side. Um, yeah, seat tracks are on. Um, don't know how it's gonna fit into the car quite yet, but even though the seat tracks are, I weld them right into it, but I can put a bar across there for, you know, mounting it wherever I need it to be. But so I guess now we gotta fit it into the car and make sure everything's okay before we make the second one. Because we're building pretty much the same seat for the driver's side. Now let's see if it fits over here. car is kicked a little bit to the passenger side so there's more room for the driver's side yeah, that's fine. he's not gonna come up that far yeah that's cool So I guess we're gonna go make a second one. And with the power of video editing, it took no time at all oh, to make that one. That one's a bit better, actually. Yeah, I like the way the holes in the back work with the T-bar the up there as well. Not much light back there, unfortunately. You can sell anything through there? Nah. Yeah, it matches the holes in the steering wheel. Holes in the roof up there. Up there. Steering wheel. 
And the dash. That was pretty cool. All right, next up, we need to, what do we need to do? I need to figure out what's going on here for some lights so I can drill some holes or do whatever I need to do to light up the interior when we hit the door switch. That, and I gotta figure out the speakers because they're gonna fit up in here. I don't know if I'm gonna cut a hole or make a shelf or how that's gonna work. Um, the phone, let's get a piece of phone. So, got to cut these things down. But I'm probably not going to worry about these until the seats are painted. I'll probably get them painted in satin black and uh, get them all mounted to the floor. I think I got to raise them up an inch just to give myself some room to bolt them in from the bottom. And um, yeah, get some wires run. I have a bunch of switches yet, too. I was thinking about putting them between here, but I still got to put the shifter in here yet. And uh, see the, the extra cut out there allowed is access to the lockbox back there and even the battery shut off the driver can just reach between the seats and uh reach the battery shut off which is right there so um gotta get some lights and i gotta figure out how to mount some speakers all right so after overthinking the lights for the seats that we want to use to project forward when you turn on the courtesy light we ended up just getting these so went down to princess auto got these uh, LED lights and they'll be more than adequate just to, to shine forward on the tow board. Um, yeah, when the courtesy lights come on, those will also come on. Either way. So, um, and then with the high speakers, I took the back off of it and um, figured out that the, the on off button and the gang switch for the other ones are just momentary buttons. So I should be able to relocate those switches with wires. Um, but Robert brought in a bunch of different props. Um, and one of them was this old flight computer. Um, it's missing the screen and all that, but it, it's loaded. All these buttons are just momentary switches. So I could actually relocate the wiring from you know the on off switch to any one of these switches. Um, the problem with this is it's just too big. I just don't have the real estate you know, just to put this in for a couple of switches. Looks cool, but you know, whatever, on the pile. Plus we needed a shifter for the car. Uh, we don't have a shifter in there yet. So uh, Robert searched eBay and found this. So this is an F4 Phantom yoke and uh, it's loaded with momentary switches. So, you know, I can use this for like horn button, flasher, the high beam, um, I mean, one over there and then uh, one up here. But I like this directional one, so I can move it up and to the sides and down. And maybe I can use that for like turning the hives on and, you know, that for ganging them together or something like that. Either way, still to be determined and uh, I got to figure out some way of mounting it. So probably in the next video will be uh, lights for the seats, uh, mounting the speakers and wiring and hooking up the shifter and stuff like that whatever so if you like the channel subscribe and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and uh, if you got any questions just uh, about this car leave them below and i'll try to capture more video about all the other different aspects of this car we have yet still to do and uh thanks for watching appreciate it